get your hands off him. Now! The movie is essentially about two people from very different worlds. You can see both guys' point of view. There's an authenticity to that. I think the fact that this was a real friendship makes the journey that much more interesting. It's not a black and white, simplistic story. There are a lot of gray areas. You never win with violence, Tony. You only win when you maintain your dignity. I want to honor their memory, but I also want to tell it truthfully. This gentleman says that I'm not permitted to dine here. I'm afraid not. He said you're a doctor and you need a driver. First of all, Tony, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a musician. And I'm about to embark on a concert tour, the majority of which will be down south. Atlantic City. No, the deep south. This was a big story that my father told me and something I had on my mind basically my whole life. And luckily, I had tape recorded my father. We had a lot of material to go with, hours of tapes. And we also had all the letters that he had written home on the trip. So we went through the letters, and we went through the tapes, and we listened to the story. Dear Dolores. I saw Dr. Shirley play the piano. He's like a genius, I think. I got back in touch with Dr. Shirley as an adult and got his side of the story. He wanted me to tell the whole story, everything that he told me and everything my father said. And he said he wanted to wait until he had passed away. I met him when I was five. I remember when I walked into his studio apartment over Carnegie Hall. He had a throne, these floor to ceiling windows. It was like Liberace meets Beethoven. And he came out in this long African robe. And he was very, very interested in my father as a family man. May I? Dear Dolores, as I'm writing this letter, I'm starting to get thirsty. You know this is pathetic, right? The fact that Don Shirley was this amazing pianist, their narrative is underscored by this beautiful music, and it is so masterfully blended together. It feels like a musical, but it's not. Don Shirley had a lot of albums. A lot of the music is music that he played during his career, and we're bringing that back. You know when you first hired me? My wife went out and bought one of your records. The one about the orphans. Cover had a bunch of kids sit around a campfire. Orpheus. Those weren't children on the cover. Those were demons in the bowels of hell. Hmm. Must have been naughty kids. My father had a real appreciation for music. I mean, working in the Copacabana and the nightclubs in New York, he saw a lot of amazing musicians. But when he met Dr. Shirley, it was a whole different level of art. Anyone could sound like Beethoven or Joe Pan, but your music what you do. Only well, you can do that. Not everyone can play Chopin. Not like I can. The idea of Tony Lip's unusual and extraordinary life being brought to life on screen, you feel very lucky to be there. Tony had a working class background and struggled, you know, born not long after the Depression, going through World War II, and just a certain mentality, sometimes bull in a china shop domineering. Like your friend the president said, ask not your country what you could do for it. Ask what you do for yourself. It is a little tricky when you're writing about a real person with the son of that real person who adored that real person. Tony Vallelonga and Don Shirley, though brilliant, great people, like everybody, they had their flaws. You don't know about your own people. You, Mr. Big Shot, you live on top of a castle. So if I'm not black enough, and if I'm not white enough, and if I'm not mad enough, then tell me, Tony, what am I? Doc and Tony, different as they are, they become like brothers. They fight, they argue like brothers, and in the end, there's a loyalty and a real affection that grows between them. That's a great shot. For me, watching this movie being shot is a whole different experience. It's crazy, but in a great way. Tony, are you hungry? Does Betty like butter? There are things about the story in terms of friendship and love and acceptance that will always be relevant. You know, the world's full of lonely people afraid to make the first move. I love Tony Lip. I love Don Shirley. These are good guys, really good guys. And they were lifelong friends after this trip. They both died within three months of each other after being friends for 50 years. Last night was the fifth anniversary of the date that the real Tony Lip passed away, January 4th, 2013. If you see yourself in either one of those characters and then understand how they are able to come together at the end and become friends and care about each other, then we can do that in the real world. I don't get it. How does he smile and shake their hands like that? Because it takes courage to change people's hearts.